the help of her lab assistant and daughter, Maria. To get the starch we need, Kim breaks down the plant material with a blender. She's going with potato, because potatoes are meat. After blending it up with some water, filtering the mush through a coffee filter, and waiting for the water to evaporate out, she has the starch powder. Maria takes over the experiment. Now I can shine. First, picking out a starch. I'm gonna use the potato. It was inspired from my home experiment, wasn't it? No. Maria then adds three cups of water to three tablespoons of starch, mixing it until it reaches a cloudy liquid state. There are already two kinds of polymers present in this liquid, but not all of them are what they need for bioplastics. One polymer has the sugar molecules laying in a straight line chain and they're linking together and the other one's kind of like branched when they're linked together. It's the branch chain of the sugar molecules that we want to break. We want to break those polymers. To break these branching polymers, Kim adds one tablespoon of acetic acid. Acetic acid, ah! Don't worry, it's just vinegar. To make the final bioplastic more flexible, they add two tablespoons of glycerin. If you want your bioplastic to be a little more rigid, you can add less. Next, they add some food coloring. This can take a few minutes, and you eventually want your liquid to be in a jelly-like state. Once the mixture is in its jelly state, and you don't see any cloudiness, you can add it to silicone molds or spread it out on a pan. The plastic will take a day or two to dry, or about six hours in full sun. These examples are a little crude, but commercially produced bioplastics are already starting to appear. We do have a long way to go to get these plastics mass produced compared to regular plastics. But science has come a long way. In the meantime, make some bioplastic at home. With a little chemistry and creativity, you just might help save the environment.